what do you have basically in store for us for the, the last four episodes in terms of what's going to come to a head the most in Jim Gordon's life, something professional or something personal? Uh, the short answer is both. You know, there are two major stories that are going to hit Jim at the end of the season. One involves him chasing down this serial killer um, that Milo Ventimiglia is playing. That's going to have a like a crushing impact upon him personally. That's going to reverberate all next year. And the other story is going to be the story that he's been pursuing all season long, which is this issue going on with. Um, the uh, control of the city by Falcone and Penguin and Jada Smith, Pickett Smith's character, both trying to wrest that control away. So um, now, of course, everyone's uh, champing at the bet for stuff on season two. Right. You know, when Anybody I was. Anybody has any answers? Tell me. That'd be great. Well, I'm I'm wondering, like, uh, how much will Arkham uh, Asylum play a role in next season, and will I finally get what Bruno promised me at TCA's, which was Hugo Strange showing up? <laughs> Uh, Hugo Strange will show up, um, and we're going to see much more Arkham's Asylum next year. You know, one of the things we've done this year is to um, introduce a lot of villains. We've seen a lot of them. And so a lot of these villains ended up going to Arkham this season. Though we didn't see it happen, we will actually find them next year in Arkham. And Arkham will become much more of a player in our world next year. Um, and you'll see uh, w w more stories will take place there, and people will come out of there. And, and how much, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, obviously, the, the great the great guessing game is all about Joker and stuff like that. Yeah. How many more sort of uh, red herring stories or, or which Joker is it uh, kind of things can we expect next season? We had, uh, what, about three or four? Well, if you exclude, I guess, the, the stand-up comics. We had a couple this season. So. We had a couple this season, and I feel like the Joker storyline is something that we're... It's a, it's a storyline that's going to continue, continue to develop next year. And we have already breaking a storyline invo that involves that. And I feel like the storyline that we've broken now will be very exciting and satisfying without actually without breaking any sort of canon lore that we you know, are trying to respect at the same time. Now, um, the CW shows are already doing spinoffs. Ha has there been any talk of doing a spinoff from Gotham? Uh, it's all the rage. You no, know, we uh, we haven't talked about that whatsoever yet. No. Would it, be, would it just be about like Penguin's mom? <laughs> I would totally watch that. <laughs> if there was a Gertrude po Cobblepot show yeah. with Carol Kane, I would watch it every year. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, gonna, it'll be like your mod or something <laughs> like that. So uh, in we're going to the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I ordered. Um, what um, what would you? Uh, what, what is the one? villain or one character, even a, a hero character, that you guys haven't really got any do yet that you, you cannot wait to include? There are a few. Um, I mean, obviously, you want to, we can talk about the Joker, but he's, he's a one, obviously. Uh, the Victor Freeze character is a story, the character that we're desperately really going to build out, you know? Because there are, if you look at the, the, the pantheon of the Batman villains, you know, some of these villains, especially the ones who involve science, you know, there are ways to tell them in very realistic and grounded ways that don't cross over that um, world where you're in man-bat territory. Wait a minute, I was going to ask about man-bat. Are we going to get man-bat? I want some Kirk Langstrom showing up. Might not get, we might have to wait for man-bat. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, talk to me in season 13. I'm like, it's all man bad all the time. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, and finally, um, you know, do you think we're going to get to a point, uh, because Jada has said that she is probably not coming back for right. season two. Um, do you envision it sort of uh, being kind of like a Dexter where there might be like a celebrity guest star for that whole season that's uh, sort of um, a villain or even a hero, but they're not, you know, they're not going to be in the show for the long haul. Possibly. You know, I mean, I feel, I feel like um, like the future of Fish Mooney in the show is still a mystery. I think the audience should like to watch and discover as how it goes by. Um, I think the idea of bringing on like a, a major villain or a major villainous character every year and is really exciting. I think a lot of shows have done, like Dexter did it, you know, or other shows you can the Sopranos or whoever, they bring on a major uh, actor who can really kind of like um, hold their own against everybody else for a year, which I think is really important. Because when you have like obviously really strong actors like we all have, and you want your, if you want to have a major villain for that character, for that season, they have to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody, the way Jada did. So yeah, that's a 
absolutely something we've discussed. All right, I'm gonna get one last Hugo Strange question because I'm obsessed with this guy. Hugo Strange. Oh yeah, you found the one guy. Um, so have you have you? Promise that to you. I put him on the spot too. Um, but uh, have you have you cast that yet? And would you be looking at a younger character or like middle age? Or? We have not cast it yet. Um, so like the conception of the character, I feel like it would be younger than the idea of the Hugo Strange that we all know. Yeah, because probably not bald. Pardon, probably not Paul. I mean, think of the Hugo Strange that we know in the comic books and then age him back 20 years, as he would have to be, or, like, or 15 years, you know, at least. So.